What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use spin boxes with PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to look at spin boxes, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is PyQt Thursday once again, and in this video we're going to look at spin boxes. So I've got just a basic spin box here, and you can see as we click it, the number moves. And we've got some text, though this is sort of deceptive. And uh, that's cool. Now we can do all kinds of different things here. We can change this to a decimal number. Uh, we can get rid of this text. We can play around with this in different uh, increments. You can see now it's doing it in fives. You can put limits. Uh, you can see it goes up to 100 and then stops. We can change that. It goes down to zero. All the things we're going to look at in this video. So spin boxes are kind of similar to combo boxes that we looked at in the last video. So I've got the exact same code from the last video. If you didn't see that video, check the link in the comment section below to the playlist. You can also find the code for this video and all my videos in the comment section as well. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So I've got this spin.py file. It's the same code that we looked at last time. But here we've got a combo box. So I'm going to change this to spin box. And we can get rid of all these combo box items. And so let's change the name of this from my combo to my spin. And then down here, we got to change it as well. So my spin, and then also down here, where we press the button, we can change that as well. We're gonna have to also change this. And we'll talk about that in a second. So first off, let's just build out the spin box. So we've got a qtw.q combo box from the last video, this needs to be a spin box. And all of these attributes will be different, obviously. So just to create this thing right off the bat, qtw.q spin box, we need to pass in self. And now we can pass in a lot of other things. So first, let's give this a value. And this is the value that's going to sort of show up by default. So I'm going to put this at 10 it really doesn't matter. Now we can also give this a maximum. And I don't know, let's say 100, right? We can also give it a minimum. And I'm going to set that equal to zero. And we can also set the single step. And I'm going to put this at say 10, or five, right? So this is every time we click the spin button, little toggle thing, this will increment it or decrease it by five. If we wanted this to be 10, we'd put 10, right? So if you want to increase it by one, you'd put one, whatever you want to increase it every time you click the button, the spin button thing, that's what the single step is, you'll notice that's lowercase and then uppercase as so many things are in QT in PI QT. So okay, so this will do it right off the bat. And uh, We'll just there's some more things we could do here. But for now, we'll just look at this. So let's come down here and make sure there's uh, everything else is okay. We're adding it to the screen by self layout add widget my spin, which is what we called it here. Remember, our app has a label at the top and a button at the bottom. So the spin box will be in the middle. And we want to be able to click the button and then have whatever was in the spin box show up on the screen. So that's what this press me button does from our last video, it will call this press it function. And then it'll say you picked my spin, but instead of dot current text, this should be just the value. Okay, so alright, let's go ahead and save this and run it. So we can go Python spin dot pi. And when we do we say pick something from the list below and it says 10. Remember our value starting out we set at 10. So 10 is showed up there. If we then start to spin, you can see it increments in things of five. Now this is really hard to kind of read. So let's just change the font of this really quickly. We know how to do this from earlier with our label, we just set the my label dot set font thing, we could do the same thing for spin box. So let's uh, change font size of spin box. And instead of my label, obviously, obviously, it's going to be my spin and let's make this I don't know 18 size or so. So okay, let's save this and run it make sure that looks okay. Okay, so now the text is bigger, it's easier to read, it starts at 10, it increments five. Now one interesting thing about spin boxes is you can change the value, you can see it's highlighted here, I can change this to anything I want. So I could say 56. If I hit enter, now it's 56. And remember, we've set this to increment in values of five. So now it, it, it will go from 81 to 86 to 91 to 96 to 100. And it'll stop at 100 because 100s are max. 
right? And we can spin back down and it goes down to zero because zero is our min. So, okay, now let's say we spin this up to 20. We click this button, it says you pick 20 and that still works because we're passing the dot value of that into our press it function that we just did. So very cool. So you'll notice this is a number. By default, PyQt spin boxes just deal with numbers. And now we can add a prefix and a suffix to this number to make it look like there's text in there, but we can't really add a list of items that you could then cycle through. You can, but then we have to overwrite the entire class and it's a whole big hassle. We'll probably look at that in another video because it's kind of interesting, but it would take probably most of a video to explain it. So we'll leave that to later. In this video, we'll just work on dealing with numbers, but we can add, like I said, a prefix and a suffix. So let's do that right now. So we come back over to our Q spin box and let's add a prefix. And this will go before the number. So I'll just put say a number sign, right? We can also put a suffix. So suffix equals, now this will go after. So I'm gonna put a little space here and I'm just gonna say order. So this is gonna be number 10 order, number 15 order, whatever. So, okay, let's go ahead and we can also change this to like 20 if we want play around with this for fun. Okay, so let's run this and see what this looks like. You see now it says number 10 order. And as we cycle through, it goes up 20. till it hits 90. Now it won't go to 110 because we set the max at 100. So it just goes to 100. So that's kind of interesting. Now you'll notice it says number and order on here. But if we click the button, it only still says 20 up here, it's not passing these things in. So if we wanted those things to show up up here, we'd have to do that in the function itself. So we can come down here to the press it function. And this is an F value. So we could say you picked number and then order. If we wanted to do it like that, we could save this and run it. So you, so let's say, let's put it 50. Now it says you picked number 50 order, right? But it's not strictly speaking, passing these things into here. We're adding them later. So just sort of keep that in mind. So that's spin box. Now we can also play around with this. I'm gonna take this off because I think that's a little silly. There we go. And you'll notice when we're spinning through these numbers, they're whole numbers. So if we went, for instance, 20.5, if we save this and ran it, well, right away we get an error here. And if we spin up here, it doesn't spin up 20.5, right? So you can see there's a deprecation warning about integers and blah, blah, blah. So what do you do if you want to use decimals, if you want to use floats anywhere? So, you know, if we want this value to be 10.5 or whatever, how do we do that? Well, we can't use a spin box for that. Instead, we use Q double spin box, and that will change everything to floats. So go ahead and save this. We don't have to make any sort of changes. This will now work. You see, we got no errors. And now it's right away set up as 10.00. And as we cycle through here, it still just goes in increments of 20 because that's the way we set it up. But we could change that now. So if we head back over here, we could say uh, increment this by 5.50, right? So if we save this and run it, starts at 10, now it will go to 15.5, and then 21, and then 26.5, and it'll increment in point in 5.5 steps increments, right? And if we click this, it's passing 48.5, which is the decimal into our press it function. So if you're gonna use decimals, just sort of keep in mind, you have to use double spin box. Otherwise it's just regular spin box, Q spin box. So I can change this back. We could play around with this. We can say uh, your order is, and then have no suffix. Right? So if we save this and run it, we see your order is number 10, your order is number 15, right? Or whatever. So you have a little bit of latitude in how you set your prefix and your suffix. You don't have to have both of them, you can have only one, right? So, you know, if we just wanted to only have a suffix and have that suffix just be some exclamation points. We could do that. There we go. That looks good. Save this and run it. You know, we're just being silly at this point, but you know, 
There we go, 10, ah, 15, 25, 35, woohoo. And again, if we press this, those exclamation points don't go through. One of them did, it didn't go through. That's just what we've got set up in the press it function. If you see down here, we've passed this exclamation point right here, right? That's the exclamation point that's coming through. It's not these things. So let me add this back in here. Let's go prefix equals, uh, let's just go number sign. So uh, we need a comma and let me put a comma here for good measure. So I'll just put this back here so that it's in the code. If you would want to download the code later and look at it, you could see it and see that there's a reference. I'm going to save this and run it one more time just to make sure everything's working. And we get number 10, woohoo! <laughs> number 20, number 30, number 40, number 50, woohoo! Whatever. So those are spin boxes, really fundamental and really easy. And uh, that's really all there is to it. The only big thing to remember really is if you want to use decimals, you have to use the double spin box instead of the regular spin box. But uh, yeah, it's kind of all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.